So our TTV, which stands for Timer Test Vehicle, is built, painted, and all the decals have been applied. Um, our next thing is to mount the electronics. In the instructions, this starts around step number 39. So I'm gonna remove the booster for now and just set that aside. Um, I'm gonna take the nose cone off. I've already disconnected the shock cord and removed the parachute. I'll have to add them back later. But I wanted to get to this part here. This is our eBay sled. Um, now the, uh, the simple timer was what this rocket was designed around, but it is large enough where you can put in other electronics, um, but there's not a lot of room. So um, on the simple timer, we have it um, pre-drilled for the holes to match up with the simple timer. And then there's just enough room here for a uh, LiPo battery here at the front end. Um, if you're doing a different uh, electronics, you may have to mount your battery on top of your electronics. Um, that will be up to you to figure out. Um, and if it's a different hole configuration, you'll have to drill holes and uh, tap those holes um, for the, whatever screws you use. Now the, the simple timer does come with um, wood screws and some little spacers, and I have those here. Um, this is probably the, the hardest part, is uh, putting these spacers underneath. Um, and these will, since these are wood screws, they'll self-tap as, um, as they go in. So like I said, this, this, it, it might help to take a little bit of super glue and just tack these down much super glue um, just so they don't uh, move around on you too much um, in fact it, it seems to be working really good so I'm going to do the other ones Line the holes. And if your holes don't align, I assume that the uh, once you start screwing them in, um, it'll break the bond on that super glue, and then you can uh, and just slide around. This is the, like the hardest part, just getting them. In, into position and once you have them then you can screw it down um, on, on the timer there's also a little arrow that points up and that's very important uh, because it has to sense the direction that the, the rocket is going to be going in because this has an apogee detection sequence um, which means that if for some reason the rocket motor doesn't ignite, which is totally possible because um, we designed this for composite motors and this is why you would use an, a timer um, to ignite composite motors. Um, everybody knows composite motors are, are finicky to ignite. Sometimes they don't. And so if the motor doesn't ignite, um, normally there would be an ejection charge to push the parachute out, but if the ejection charge doesn't come out, um, the timer, simple timer, has an apogee circuit which will fire off an alternate ejection charge to push the parachute out so the rocket doesn't come screaming down. Okay, so uh, my board is installed. Um, our next step is to install the switch. Now, we use a simple switch and it's gonna get installed right underneath here and the, the push button is right there. Uh, before I install it, I'm gonna cut these wires a little bit shorter because um, they're just like way too long for what we need. And then re restrip them.
Okay, and then I'm going to glue it down to the board and I'm going to use thick super glue and I just want to use just a little bit because I don't want to get any glue in that spring mechanism here. In fact, you see on the on the timer on the switch, there's an area here where that doesn't have holes, and that's where I want to put my glue drop. Right there. I'm going to bend those around, and this is going to be hard to see. Okay, so when I get it into the position, I want to press it down pretty good. Okay, and then you'll see on the simple timer, there's an SW, which stands for the switch. Um, so that's where I want to put those wires into. And hopefully I, I cut them. They look to be just barely long enough. So I'm gonna un open up the screw terminals here. And Doesn't feel like it's gone in. Okay, so my uh, my wires are in. Um, the switch is right there. Um, at this point, I could put in just another little drop of glue. I just want to make sure that that uh, that switch is not going to move around on me. All right, I'll let that harden. Um, now the battery is going to go right here, and um, I would recommend using uh, Velcro on it. And I don't have the other part of Velcro, but that would sit right there. Uh, for right now, for just temporary, um, you can take tape and tape it down. But you want to have it fairly rigid in there so it's not moving around on you. Um, you can also wrap cellophane, just one layer of cellophane tape, the clear tape around here. You don't want to build up too much thickness here or it will be harder to slide into your tube. Um, on this particular battery, I need a different connector um, to connect to the simple timer itself. Um, you'll see the battery, the plus and the minus. So again, I'll put those in there. Missed. <laughs> Up. I put the, the put the minus in the the battery plus terminal. Good thing it fell out. There we go. See if I get it to 
hooked up correctly. And you have to turn my switch on, which is I just press the button in here. It's not coming on, which either tells me my battery's dead or I'm worried about these uh, these wires going into my switch. Yeah, they're in there. So it must be my... <laughs> that one came undone. Well, you get the idea. Uh, you're going to hook that up and I'm going to disconnect my battery here just in case. Okay. Um, now, what I forgot to do is to uh, get an igniter for the ejection charge. So I'm gonna pause here and I'll be right back.